Welcome to Radical Connections live stream presentation. Today I'm really, really pleased to welcome Kate Weeks to the stage. Um, Kate plays the banjo and guitar and sings, um, and she's from my hometown, from Wakefield. Uh, we were just chatting, and we both work in the north, and she is a wilderness guide in Yukon and then Northwest Territories, and myself as a physician. Um, and... Again, my thoughts are with people in the north as they're getting back after all the wildfire evacuations. With Radical Connections, we have some news to share. We were going to do a fundraiser next week at the Ottawa Art Gallery, but like many live events, it was we weren't getting enough interest. So we have postponed it, and it would, will be a house concert in my home uh, on December 10th. More details coming on that one. Um, at this point, I'd like to turn the stage over to Kate. I'm really looking forward to hearing you play and sing. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I am going to play a mix of styles, musical styles today on a couple of different instruments. And I'm going to kick things off playing claw hammer banjo on a uh, a tune that has its roots in Appalachian old time music. And uh, I've just been starting to play this claw hammer style in the last couple of years and really enjoying um, its rhythmic function and learning more about that, uh, that tradition. So here we go. I'm gonna turn my banjo on now. That's gonna make it so much better. kicker that one um this past summer i had the opportunity to attend the algoma trad music camp which is in northern ontario near sault st marie and uh the camp um was celebrating the music of brian piquel who is a, a tune writer um that based in paris ontario and so we spent a whole week um learning Brian Pickel tunes, performing Brian Pickel tunes, and Brian was there um, to take it all in. So it was a really, really neat experience. And I'd, I'd heard some of Brian's music prior to that, but this was an opportunity to really kind of dive in a little bit deeper. And 
he he wrote fiddle tunes, but he also played claw hammer banjo. And so he's got, I think it's a whole album of, of claw hammer banjo tunes. And so I was tasked with, uh, with learning some of those so that we'd be able to represent them at the camp. And so I'm going to play a few of those for you now. Um, let's see if I get the names right. So it's Bud's Waltz into the dog who ate the spatula into the bully cat polka. So... Here they go. Switch over to guitar here. I'm going to play a tune. Um, I've been working on a style of playing um, that's got its roots in um, Mississippi or Delta blues. So it's a, a fingerstyle approach to guitar playing that's syncopated. And 
um, I'm going to do a combo of, of two different songs, both by American uh, songwriters. So the first one is um, Freight Train, which you're maybe familiar with. It was written by Elizabeth Cotton. And uh, I was curious to learn, um, I guess Elizabeth Cotton, she played guitar at quite a young age and ended up putting it aside um, when she started um, working um, like a, as a housekeeper in people's homes. Um, and then when, I think when she was in her 60s, she ended up becoming the, the housekeeper for the Seeger family. So like Pete Seeger, um, I think would have been a kid at that time. And uh, so she ended up working in this very musical household. And it was th through that that they ended up discovering that she had played guitar. And um, so she ended up kind of being discovered as a as a musician um, kind of later in life. And um, I think she was 90 when she ended up uh, winning a Grammy Award. So kind of a, a neat story and neat lineage. And um, she actually was a left-handed guitar player. And she had a guitar that was strung for right-handed players, but she played it uh, upside down. So she had a really unique approach to um, picking out the, the melody essentially with her thumb and doing the rhythm or bass notes with her fingers, which when you, when you see me play, it'll be sort of the opposite from that. So I'm going to go from Freight Train into Creole Bell, which is a, a song that I learned from um, listening to Mississippi John Hurt, who had in some ways some some crossover in his in his story uh just in that he again he played um i think he played his whole life but he ended up making a recording in the 20s that kind of didn't go anywhere and then it was in the sort of during the folk revival in the 60s that um i guess his his music was kind of discovered the recordings that he'd made decades before and he ended up becoming part of that folk revival and touring the the university campuses and playing the Newport Folk Festival um and I think that was in 63 he played Newport um when it was just kind of he was people were just hearing him for the first time essentially and I think he died in 1966 or something like that so again kind of just the last little chapter of his life but both of these um guitar players and, and songwriters had a, a really a uh, big influence on on all the guitar players and musicians to come. So I'm going to do a little mashup of those two songs. <laughs> Creole bell, I wish her well, my darling lady, my Creole bell. When stars do shine, I'll make her mine, my darling lady, my Creole bell.
from there, I'm going to go into um, another blues, the St. Louis Blues, um, which was, I guess it was written in uh, 1914 by W.C. Handy. So it's been around a while, and it's kind of a neat, uh, it's kind of a neat meeting point, I think, of of blues and and jazz and where they kind of come together. Um, and it's a another kind of fun fingerstyle piece to play. So we'll go with that. <laughs> as a canoe and hiking guide often in the summer months and um, most of the canoe tripping that I've done has been in BC and the Yukon and the Northwest Territories and um, during the pandemic I wasn't able to go north and I found myself um, spending more time getting to know the area that I'm from and I hadn't spent a, a summer uh, in Ontario for close to 20 years so it was uh, it was interesting to have that as um, 
the landscape that I was going to be paddling through and getting to know the rivers around here. And I'm uh, from Smith Falls originally. Um, I've also lived in Ottawa and Kingston and uh, had never paddled the Rideau River. So this was a, a project that I developed, um, ended up receiving a, a grant from the Canada Council for the Arts and with the idea of paddling the Rideau and uh, writing about it, writing songs about the experience. And um, as it got closer to the time to go on this trip, um, things were just starting to, to open up. We were able to kind of have more contact with people again. And um, I realized after spending a couple of years mostly by myself that it would be enjoyable to do the canoe trip with other other people. So I ended up inviting um, nine other songwriters to go down the river with me. So there was a group of 10 of us kind of split into a couple of different chunks and um, paddling this river. And um, my my dad ended up coming on the canoe trip as sort of a, a last minute addition as well. He's a songwriter too. And so we ended up co-writing a song together. Um, but I'm actually going to play for you now a song that I wrote um, inspired by that trip. And I guess it's kind of playing on the idea of leave no trace principles. So the idea that you, um, you know, pack it in and pack it out. Um, and it's, uh, I guess, partly one of the big, contrast for me paddling in the south or paddling, particularly on the Rideau it's um you know it's it's pretty developed along the shorelines um it was often hard to find somewhere to stop and take a take a break because there'd be sort of just privately owned land all along the way and uh so um and anticipating this trip I was imagining all the possible uh things that could go wrong because I guess I guess if I think of them ahead of time then they won't happen on the actual trip and so uh ended up writing this song, it's called What If It Rains. Gray. 
What if all the water rose swept us all away? What if it rains? How will we mark this time? I know it's gonna go back with no way. it all in, leave no trace, pack it out, when you leave this place, pack it all in, gonna make it fit, leave no trace of where you've been, pack it out, every piece when you leave, nothing to see. go back to the banjo. One of the things that's kind of curious about the banjo is um, it's generally played in an open tuning. And so what that means is if you're playing in the key of C, you end up tuning to the key of C. If you're playing in the key of G, you end up tuning to the key of G. The guitar also gets played in open tunings, but somehow the banjo, I guess to my to my somewhat limited understanding, exclusively gets played in open tunings. And there, there's quite a few of them. Um, but I would say C and G are probably the most common. And uh, for those of you that want to know more about this entire thing, we've got these little um, railway spikes along the side of the neck where you can, you end up kind of clipping the string behind it. And it kind of acts like a, a mini capo um, for that shorter, this fifth string up here is shorter than the rest of them. So when I put the capo on, I've got to be able to uh, change the key for that, for that little string too. And uh, one of the neat things about moving to uh, the Wakefield area is that uh, I am not the only Kate in Wakefield that plays banjo. And it's not a very big place, so it's I think it's impressive. We've started a, uh, a banjo club. Although I think the name keeps changing, but it's something like the Gatineau Hills Ladies Banjo Club or Auxiliary or... Uh, depending on the mood. But, and there's kind of a banjo alley there on the main drag when you drive into Wakefield. Multiple banjo players living across the street from each other. So I'm going to play another couple of... Um, old-time Appalachian tunes kind of strung together. One of them is Shady Grove, which I think is most commonly known in sort of a minor key, but this is a major version, which I think is kind of cool. And into another tune called Nancy Rowland.
cheeks as red as a blooming rose, eyes of the darkest brown. She's the darling of my heart, fairest one around. Shady Grove, my little love, Shady Grove, I say. Shady Grove, my little love, I'm bound to go away. Peaches in the summertime, apples in the fall. If I can have the one I love, I won't have none at all. Shady Grove, my little love, Shady Grove, I say. Shady Grove, my little love, I'm bound to go away. Shady Grove, my little love, standing in the door. Shoes and stockings in her hand and her little bare feet on the floor. Shady Grove, my little love, Shady Grove, I say. Shady Grove, my little love, I'm bound to go away. Peaches in the summertime, apples in the fall. If I can have the one I love, I won't have none at all. Shady Grove, my little love, Shady Grove, I say. Shady Grove, my little love, I'm bound to go away. Shady Grove, my little love, Shady Grove, I say. Shady Grove, my little love, I'm bound to go away. I think I'll just do uh, one more one more song for you and um, just having the debate of whether that'll be on guitar or banjo. I think we'll stick with the banjo and um, I'm going to do gonna do a couple of tunes by a Quebecois fiddler and tune writer, uh, Claude Maté, um, who... I guess I'm I'm kind of new to playing traditional music in all of its forms, uh, and I'm a recent, I guess, both fiddle and banjo banjo convert. And uh, Claude Maté um, has some really great tunes, and um, and he's contemporary, he's still out there doing his thing. So it's worth worth looking up. I'm gonna start with a tune that he wrote that's actually, it's called um, Valsa Sank. So it's like a waltz, but it's in 5-4 uh, time instead of 3-4, which is sort of more conventionally how we have come to hear waltzes. And, and from that, I'm going to go into real Robin.
right. Well, thanks so much for listening, everyone. It's uh, been a real treat to play for you. And uh, thank you to Radical Connections for, for having me here. Working in the studio, <laughs> and it felt a little weird. I'm going to get banjo lessons from you, Kate, I think. That's fantastic. How do you dance to 5-4? Uh, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Kept one, trying two. to do that. Yeah. I wanted to mention Kate's got an album coming out, Better Days Ahead, which is also, I think we're all feeling that right now. Yeah, Looking it's, it's already out. It's out. Yeah. It's okay. Out, yeah. So if you want to hear more Kate, that's a great place to do it. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay.